So, having read through Livy, having read through Polybius, what we're going to do now is make some notes on about Hannibal's crossing of the Elbe. So we're going to learn about this epic, make some notes about this epic journey, run down why it's so famous, and develop historical analysis skills. Key words already similar to last time. So I've probably placed uh, ambuscade with the uh, more straightforward word ambush, terrain, shape of the land, ravines, the valleys and the mountain, impassable conduct through. Propaganda, um, information by our government make themselves look good. They're very, very biased propaganda. Let's start off with a few stats. Polybius tells us Hannibal's army in Spain was 100,000 strong. That really doesn't seem very likely. We think that by the time Hannibal left Spain, he entered Gaul, he had 59,000 men with him, according to Polybius. Again, these figures might be inflated. 50,000 infantry, 9,000 cavalry, plus, of course, 37 elephants. Polybius tells us by the time Hannibal crossed the Rhone, he was down to 46,000 troops, 38,000 infantry, 8,000 cavalry. Again, these figures are, it's difficult to know. Uh, it's difficult to know why the numbers go down so much. Philippius and Libby says it's because there's a lot of fighting, a lot of losses. Maybe, maybe they weren't that many in the first place. We just don't know. So why does Hannibal cross the Alps? You need to look at the map to figure this one out. Here's Hannibal. He travelled from New Carthage with his huge force. He's crossed the Rhone. He's crossed the Rhone quite far north and then gone through the Alps. So why? It's all to do with this city here, Massilia, which today called Marseille. And it's to do with the Romans and Scipio, the elder Scipio. Remember, when uh, the Romans here, about the war, about the Tessaguntum. They send one Roman army down to Sicily, it's at Carthage, led by some Chronic Romans. And the other consular army, led by Scipio, they send by sea to attack Hannibal in Spain. So they hug the coast, and when they get to Massilia, which is one of their allies, they hear in this city, well, what are you going to Spain for to fight Hannibal? He's here. So he goes, no, it can't be. It's just north of here. So Scipio sends a cavalry force, a few hundred men north, to intercept uh, Hannibal and to see what's going on. They come across Hannibal's cavalry, they fight a skirmish, Carthaginians retreat, which of course to the Romans is a great victory. And then Hannibal realizes there is a Roman army down here. A consular army. He doesn't want to fight them. Then his, his plan is to fight the Romans in Italy, which means he can't go this way, even if he wanted to. He said he's got to go through the Alps. Head over the Alps here, head to the Po Valley, just here, where there are Celtic tribes who are enemies of Rome. So that's why he chooses to cross the Alps and go and visit the, the, uh, the coastal woods. So what's wrong with the Alps? Well, first off, there's geographical problems. Obviously, it's a range of mountains. Getting a massive army of a lot of them Africans and Spanish across a huge mountain range in uh, late autumn, early winter, sort of September, October time, is quite a big job. There's no roads, there's no railways, obviously. You've got to cross the mountains. And as we've read from our previous and Livy, at several points, there wasn't really even a path. And they were slipping and sliding all over the place, and a lot of people were lost that way. Allied to that, there was lots of fighting to be done. There were people living in the area, and they really couldn't stop themselves from trying to ambush and attack Hannibal's army. And perhaps not because they wanted to crush his army. But because, well, this is a great chance to stick to pinch stuff. As they go to the York territory, you can rob them. You can attack them and rob them. So, as you read again in the sources, uh, on at least two occasions, Hannibal's column came under quite intense attack. And on the first occasion, 
that they were blocking a path, they were blocking a, a ravine. Hannibal found out that they went home in the evening. So at night, he had his elite troops occupy their positions at the, top, at the head of the pass. And in that way, his troops were able to, uh, to go through the ravine and fight a battle uh, with the guys who tried to attack them. A bit later on, another tribe pretended to be friendly to them and then attacked, and Hannibal had to fight them off as well. Either way, as well as the ice and the snow and the mountains and the weather, there's also been attacked the whole time. In both Polybius and Livy, we have accounts of Hannibal's speeches berating his men for being cowards. Oh, I can't believe you're doing this. We fought all these battles together, blah, blah, blah. Or, look, lads. I know it's tough, but down there's the Po Valley. Look, it's all beautiful. We'll have our friends there. We have to defeat the Romans. Whether these speeches took place or not, it, it, it's very, it seems to me, very unlikely. Even if they did, Hannibal's got an army of, what, 30,000 men in a mountain. How's he going to gather them together? How are they going to hear him? 30,000 is a lot of people. 40, 50,000 is a lot of men. He can't possibly have gathered them together and made a speech they all heard. It's not microphones. So this speechy stuff has always got to be taken with a huge pinch of salt. Resourcefulness. There are several instances during the, 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 the sources of Hannibal's shanky resourcefulness. Most famously, it's a story in Livy, but not in Polybius, of the rock, rocks blocking the, uh, the ravine, Hannibal heating them up, and then cooling them with soured wine so they would crack and so they could be broken into gravel. Yeah. It's an example of Hannibal's resourcefulness. He's not just a great leader, he knows science. Finally, in a roundabout, ooh, let's say October, of the year uh, 218, Hannibal, 219, 218, Hannibal arrives in northern Italy. He reaches the Po Valley, comes out of the Alps just here. It's taking him 15 days to cross the Alps, I think. He arrives just about here in the Po Valley, ready to take on the Romans. We're pretty certain of his forces at this point, because he himself left the inscription on a column. He has 26,000 troops left, 20,000 infantry. 6,000 cavalry, and he's 37 elephants. So he, he, he certainly suffered very large losses in the five-month journey from New Carthage to, uh, to Italy. He's got 26,000 left. But they're going to be elite. They're the veterans. They're the guys, the toughest ones you can rely on. If they've made that journey with him, he's lost a lot, but maybe the ones he's lost are the ones who aren't so much used anyway. And then, crucially, He's kept a lot of his cavalry, and they're going to be his elite arm, his elite shock force when he comes to fight the Romans. 